I hope you are doing great. Oh, I've got a camera that's really dark. Okay, we're just going to go with it. And let me move this down a little bit. Move that back a little bit. Alright, sorry I'm a little bit late, but um, I was watching something on YouTube. So I hope that today was great for you. It was great for me. I spent the day working on my computer and shopping for a new computer. So I haven't decided yet what I want. I mean, I know what brand. I don't know. There's just too many choices. I know what my budget is. And I really don't need much this time. So anyway, today we are going to talk, we are going to continue Psalm 119, um, starting in 57 through, oh, I don't remember, sorry, 57 through 96, I think. I think so. And then maybe we can finish the rest. Uh, it'll probably be another couple of days that we're doing this. Okay, let's jump into prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just thank you that you are our provider and our protector and our sustainer. You are our creator. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge, God. God, you are on your throne and you are in control and there is nothing, nothing that you don't know, nothing that you don't see, nothing that you don't hear, God. You are in control forever. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I Am. You are magnificent in all of your ways. You are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are loving and caring and compassionate and uh, faithful. You are trustworthy. You are patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. We just uh, pray for the lost tonight, God. We just lift them up to you. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears so that they could be saved by Jesus. Open their hearts, God, to truth and allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals. We just pray for them to be drawn back to you, God, that they would repent of their sins and that you would reconcile the relationship that they once had with you we pray for all the disasters God there's like a really deep earthquake today with the tsunami warning it seems like there are more and more earthquakes with tsunami warnings every day we just pray that you would be with these people that you would give them peace that during their time of tragedy that they would be drawn to you that they would see the hands and feet of Jesus that come to meet their needs and that they would see the loving compassion of Jesus too. We also pray God for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And we just pray that they would feel your presence. We pray for people that are sick. I know several right now that are sick, God. We just pray that you would um, heal their bodies and just give them strength every day let them feel your presence too and let them be spending more time in your word God as they are sick and they are unable to go as they normally would go and in Jesus name we pray Amen alright well I was a little late tonight um, even past 7 late I got a late start on dinner and I don't know. 
It's just how things go sometimes. Okay, we are doing 57 through 96. And this again is about God's word and his statutes and um, seeking knowledge through him. It's just really good. I've really enjoyed this little study. You are my portion, O oh Lord. I wonder if my volume, how my volume is on either one of these. I think this one is probably up all the way. Because I've been listening to people today. Okay. I'll move that because I don't want that to stop. Okay. You are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay. To keep your commandments, the cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you. Because of your righteous judgments, I am a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. So again, again, it's more about God's word. It's more about God's testimonies. It's more about God's law. It's more about being obedient to God. And just more of that. And then the next part is 65 through 72. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts within my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. That is so good. The law of your mouth, this word, is more to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Now this, this word, is what we need more than riches. Riches are fleeting. Your hands have made me and fashioned me Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let, I pray, your merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to your word to your servant. Let, my, let your tender mercies come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they treated me wrongfully with falsehood, but I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, those who know your testimonies. Let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes, that I may not be ashamed. So again, God... God fashioned us. He made and fashioned us. And we need his understanding. Let your tender mercies come to me that I may live. And I will meditate on your precepts. Let my heart be blameless regarding your statutes that I may not be ashamed. So let's move on to 81. My soul faints for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail from searching your word, saying, When will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in smoke. 
yet I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me, which is not according to your law. All your commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help me. They almost made an end of me on earth. But I do not forsake your precepts. Revive me to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. So again, revive me. This guy has enemies. I don't know whether this is David. I don't remember. This says meditations on the excellence of God's word. It doesn't say who wrote it. But it kind of sounds like how King David's are about the enemies coming against him. Okay, let's start with 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to your ordinances. For all are your servants. Unless your law had been my delight, I would then have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have seen the consummation of all perfection but your commandment is exceedingly broad. So God's word is settled in heaven and his faithfulness endures to all generations. I will never forget your precepts for by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. Wow. That is so good. That is such good, God's word. It is so good. So I hope that um, you're encouraged to delve into God's word every day. You know, you don't have to read. We read, I don't know, 40-something verses, maybe 39 verses. Yeah, we read 39 verses. And I know it's a weird amount, but it's just because it's split up in several um, little chunks of about 5 or 10. Or about 10 or 8, I don't know. Anyway... God's Word is so powerful, and God's Word is true, and God's Word is what we need to get through this life. We need this. We need this. These are our instructions. We talked about God's Word last night in youth and how important it is to us and that we need to read it. And we also need to hide some of it in our hearts because... We have no guarantee that we will always have Bibles. I mean, I have a Bible in every room. But there have been times in history to where all the Bibles and all the books were taken. And so I'm not going to discount that that could happen. Because history does repeat itself. You can read the first parts of the Bible in the Old Testament. And a lot of what they were doing back then that was an abomination to God, we are doing right now, and it's still an abomination of God. He does not change his mind. He does not waver. What was sin in the Old Testament is sin now. All right. How are we going to do our salvation message tonight?
let's do I wish I could find the little theme that goes to this I guess until I do um, I don't know where it is where it went to See what we have back here. I cleaned off my desk ish the other day, but it's still still not as clean as I would like it. Oh, look. I wish I could find this. <laughs> Voila! Okay. So let's do this. Let's see if I can figure this out. Because I had a hard time with it last time. I don't know where that goes. Alright. Maybe I need to read the instructions. Because I have the instructions here. Okay. Where is it? Okay. Jesus is the answer. Is that upside down? Jesus is the answer. <laughs> okay. Okay, Paul said, whatever a person is like, I try to find common ground with him so that he will let me tell him about Christ. And that is 1 Corinthians 9.22. All right. As you begin to share the track, try to tie it into something you have already discussed. Some of the most common struggles in people's lives today are mentioned. Okay. What are your struggles that you're going through? Loneliness, guilt, suicide, sex, stress, life after death. Then we have, we have this. God loves you. Whatever your struggle is, whatever you're going through, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. He created you for a purpose to have a personal relationship with Him. Genesis 1.27 He wants you to experience a full and abundant life right here on earth. Jesus said, My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10.10 10. Then why don't more people experience this life? We must choose to love God or reject Him. His desire you know, I gotta figure out how to do this better. Please excuse me. His desire, however, is that we choose His way and experience the full abundant life that Jesus talked about in John 10.10. 10. One might ask if that is God's if that is God's desire, why aren't more people why aren't more people experiencing that full and abundant life? So, 
two because of sin. Because of sin, people are not experiencing the full and abundant life that Jesus has for them. Now, the Bible makes it clear in Romans 3.23 that we are all sinners and later in Romans 6.23 that the price for this sin is death. It is important to explain that this is Oh, I'm sorry. When we are spiritually dead, we are apart from God, eternally separated. Isaiah 59 2 says, Your sins have cut you off from God. Yeah, it's on there. Your sins have cut you off from God. So let's look for three. I had a hard time finding three last time. There we are. Okay. Sin separates God and man. Sin separates man from God, but there is hope. There is hope. Once I get the thing open. Okay. Then I gotta go back and find four. The price has already been paid by Jesus, God's one and only Son. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. Okay, I'm not going to read that. So this is 4. Christ was innocent and knew no sin, took our beating for us. It is our sin and punishment for which he gave his life. The greatest expression of love is when he laid down his life. God showed the great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Romans 5, 8. Okay, now i got to find 6. Now it becomes Jesus is the answer. And in fact, John 14, 6 makes it clear that there is no other way to God except through Jesus. Occasionally, um, okay. It should be clear by now that God has done far more than his part. The rest is up to us. Each person must individually decide whether or not he is willing to turn from his sins, which is to repent and give his life to Jesus. God loves you and has a great plan for your life. He wants you to experience a full life. You are separated from him because of sin in your life. Jesus came to pay for that sin. The answer is accepting Jesus into your heart as the Lord of your life. So Jesus is the answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so seven is, it's up to you. You must decide for yourself if you are willing to turn from your sins and ask Jesus into your heart. 
Romans 10, 9, and John 1, 12. Receive Christ, reject Christ. So this is a very short prayer. Is there an 8? No, I don't see an 8. Okay, there's just a 7. Okay, it's up to you. If you would like to repeat this prayer, then I will leave spaces to where you can get your words in. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So once you ask Jesus into your life, you can now know that you have eternal life. John 1 John 5, 11, 12, and John 10, 28, 29. It is important that you be baptized and get involved in a local church. Get help from an older believer. Spend daily time in prayer and Bible reading. Share with others what Jesus has done for you. And this is a... What is this? I can't read it. Oh, Student Discipleship Ministries. So this is the cross. This is what we just went over. Just keep back a little bit so you can see it on both cameras. So this is what we just went over. This has been lost, but now it is found. Just like you were lost, Jesus is the answer, and you were found. So if you pray prayed that prayer and invited Jesus into your heart, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his son. Unlike that uh, tract said, read God's word every day and pray and praise. Find some praise music that you like. Hello, my friend Josie. How are you? Are you doing okay today? I'm waiting for her to answer. Okay. I am going to do the blessing from God. My poor little study Bible is falling apart. Just like poor thing. Probably because I stuff things in my Bible. Makes them fall apart. So number six, twenty-four through twenty-six says the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So we all need to be blessed by God. And his word is a blessing. So reading these psalms, uh, the Psalm 119 has been a blessing for me. So we'll probably have a couple more nights of Psalm 119 until we get through. And I'm not sure what we're going to do then. No, we'll just go wherever God leads us. So, um, you're just feeling fair today? You're not feeling good? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I thought I was sleepy all of a sudden. Okay, do you have any prayer requests, Josie?
can't keep still. I don't even have music going on. I just want to move this chair while I sit here. Okay, well, I'm going to pray. Oh, prayers for everyone. Okay. So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to get off of here. I need to go get Seth some dinner. He was watching Chips while ago. Chips. Chips, the old show that we used to watch in the 70s and 80s. He was watching clips from Chips while ago. And it's funny. I still know the music. That's so crazy. But before it even came on, I was singing the music. I was just like humming the music because I already, it's in my brain. And that's how we need to get God's Word. We need to get God's Word in our brains like that. that years later, we'll remember these uh, scriptures that God has given us. I couldn't believe that I knew that theme song. You like that show? <laughs> I did too, but it's, I forgot that I you know, it's like you hear something so much that I still know the theme song. <laughs> that was so crazy. Anyway, all right, well, let's jump into some prayer. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you, God, for all the many blessings that you've given us, for all the things that you do for us, God, the protections that we don't even see because we can't see the spiritual warfare that goes on around us. And we can't see that if we would have just been down the road five seconds farther, that it could have been a catastrophe, God. We don't see these things, but we know that you protect us, and we thank you for that. And we thank you for provision, God, that you provide food and all the things that we need, God. We thank you for that. And we thank you, God, that you are our sustainer, that you sustain us. We don't need a government to sustain us because we have you. You are the sustainer. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you sent your son to die on a cross, a cruel cross, a very cruel death, to save us, to offer us eternal life to give us a forever home. This is just our temporary home. We are just passing through here. But where we are going forever is where there is perfection. There is perfect beauty and there is perfect love and joy and peace. And nothing, nothing can uh, change it. God, I just lift up Josie to you. I just pray that you will continue to heal her body and be with Austin. Protect him, God. We just pray for Mike. We pray for healing for him, and we pray for the boys. We pray for uh, if any of them are sick, we pray for healing for them. We just pray that they would feel your presence, God, in their, in their healing and that they would know that you are healing their bodies and that you are making them stronger every day. God, I pray for my daughter. I pray for the same for her. Just stronger every day and just that she would feel your presence in that healing. God, I pray for um, Josie's family. I pray for her brothers and her sisters and their families, God. And I pray for her children and their children. And I just pray for blessings and protection and provision for them, God. And that they would be protected from this disease, God. Because it just, it doesn't hit everybody the same. And I guess that's because we all have different body chemistries and different immunities and just different things. We also lift up... Um, Josie's friend we just pray that you would be with her and that you would meet her needs and if she needs healing that you would heal her body we also pray for um, the school God that has started back in Walnut Springs and Morgan we pray for these students we pray for these teachers for these administrators we pray that this would be a good school year 
that they won't be having to wear masks like they did last year, God, that they would have freedom and that they would be able to breathe air. God, we just pray. We pray for an eradication of this disease. But more than that, God, we pray for an eradication of sin. We pray for a Jesus movement to move through our country and throughout the world that cannot be stopped, God. We pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for um, the prodigals, God. We pray for them to come home. God, we just pray for boldness, that you will help us to go and uh, to share your truth, your truth out of your word, God, and to share the gospel of Jesus, to share the good news that Jesus came to save. Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to save. And God, that uh, people would hearken to the message that is in your word. And God, we just... Uh, forgot somebody that I know. We pray for Deborah and we pray for her sister, God. We just pray for healing. We just pray that you would be with her and her family. We pray for all the many people that have lost loved ones, God. Through many situations, many illnesses, COVID and many other things, just freak accidents, God. We just pray for their families. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And that they would feel your presence, God, in the absence of their loved one. God, we just again thank you for all that you do for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Seth's watching something. I don't know. Ricky's home, so he's watching something now. I don't know what he's watching, but he seems to be enjoying it. He was watching... Um, movie car chases a while ago and I said you can watch them but you can't have any any sound because sometimes they're not saying very nice things <laughs> so he was watching silent silent movie car chases <laughs> but he likes that all right well I'm gonna get off of here so I hope you have an awesome day tomorrow Josie I hope you're just feeling better and better every day um, it takes a while though, sadly, it takes a while to feel better, to feel the energy and everything. It takes a while. All right, well, uh, pray and share warriors and my friend Josie, my sister, um, have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow and much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.